Okay. Um. All right, that seems to be working. Okay. Uh... Uh... Oh dear, that may have been a mistake. Okay, no, there we go, that's fine. Yep, that works. Now I'm going to do something I might regret and turn off the lights in my room. Okay, that might be a bit too dark. <laughs> Need to have someone else this room. Need to not feel like com like I'm completely alone here before <laughs> I do that, I think. Yeah.
Let's see. I know absolutely nothing about this game, so it's going to be good. I hear the whispers of the past as the wind blows through the trees. I see how each branch, bending and swaying, connects to the history of everything. As a child, I thought it was dull and ordinary. I thought it was just the way of things. The word spoke to me, and that was that. Little did I know how different I was. Okay. I focus on the words. They melt in my mind. And they lead. Trails of cosmic dust across my eyes. Across the abyss. Pathways along the unified field. Connecting all that has been. And all that will be. I see the past, present and the future. It is with this that I am lured. I'm pulled and torn through time and space to what some would call fate, to what I would call an eventuality. You see, the words are never wrong, and I am merely a passenger, a terrified and trembling passenger on this long, long road to the end. Okay. This is my mind oh. back into her house. <laughs> my friend, Audrey. With no understanding or discernible reason for being there. Even for a man of my making, I was not prepared for what I would find inside. I was not prepared for this to be the start of my story. All right. Dramatic, spooky. I like it. Okay, I guess it's loading. It's just me. Bloody terrible storm out there tonight. Audrey? It's John. Just thought I'd pop by and say hi. One sec. Nah. Make sure this, these volumes are okay. Uh, hopefully. 
dinner with Joy, 6 p.m. Uh Okay. Jesus Christ. Oh God. Okay. Think. The phone. I need to use the phone. Dinner. An ordinary word to ordinary folk. But to me, it is everything that it has ever represented, including the last supper of my dear friend. With this power, how could I not decide to investigate? Well. I'm not sure what I'm doing here.
This is... I was I thought this was going to be a horror game, but it feels like more of a mystery thing. And I am liking it. It's weird and I'm not exactly sure how to go about doing things yet, but um Hold on a second. Okay. So that's... Uh, uh. What else can I comment on? Uh... I see. Oh, hold on. Ha. So if that's the case, then this must... hold on. Whoops. Oh, shit. Oh, bloody hell. Here, hold on, let's make sure that's actually... Okay. So this... Must be. No, I did that wrong. Um, let's for now say this is last. So this, but this must be after this. Because she mentions mentions the food is burnt here and is eating it, and this is she's making the food and burning it. So um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Fever tablets. Check the bathroom. Hold on. Alright, so for the moment, let's assume that this 
goes right after the dinner. And then this would obviously go immediately after that because, yeah, yeah, okay. All pretty solid so far. Now, hold on. Okay, that makes sense so far. So we're clearly missing some stuff still, but um sure when that would be. That doesn't really fit into the, the series of events quite yet, does it? This is really interesting. I'm enjoying it a lot, actually. It's kind of obtuse, but in a fun way, so I'm not complaining <laughs> too much. Uh, a bit stuck as to where to go now, though. Unless, can I go in the bathroom? Ooh. Okay. That's something. Uh. No, that doesn't. Um. Whoops. I haven't gotten all the memories yet, I'm assuming that's you know important to figuring out the full <laughs> sort of sequence of events.
that doesn't match up with those footsteps. But I'm guessing... Did you just go through the wall? You know what? I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna question it too much. Okay. Got that one. I mean, that one obviously goes after this one, so I gotta rethink my ordering a bit, but... I'm not sure what else I'm looking for now, actually. Oh. No, that's opening that door. It's not what I'm looking for. Oh, that's all of them. Okay. Let me actually just... Uh, okay, so starting out... Um... So this must be the last one. And before that, we have um, this. And then before that, we have this. And before that, we have this. And So, so, yeah, right, so, um, nothing as usual. So, um, in that case, 
before this. Yeah, and then this must go before that. And then... Five... Four... Try this. Is this correct? How do I know if it's correct? I mean, I guess it's not. So, um, okay, unless this is two and this is three. Where should we, let me, let me. Oh shit. Oh bloody hell. Hmm. She's running from over here. Does that change the series of events at all? Yeah, that must have gone after burning the food, right? Unless this is second and this is third, I guess? Am I just... is something wrong with the controls, or...?
Well, I did. It's right here. I just don't know what you don't want me to do after that. Start from the beginning. Burnt food. Then she'd go and open the door. Eat the food. Washing plates. Then these. That is when this person sneaks in. Seriously, am I, am I doing something wrong here, or is... That's neat, I can just go right through this. Okay, um... I do not know what this video game wants me to do. <laughs> and I'm like so far into this that I don't want to just like give up? Should I- hold on. I'm gonna look up something real quick. Because this is annoying.
Nope, it's just broken. Okay, cool. I mean, unless I've got the order wrong somehow, but I don't think I do. And I checked the other... I checked other configurations that I... <sighs> From, from the looks of it, I'm literally, like, almost right at the end of the game, too, so it's like... If I could get this to work, that would be it. Uh, yeah, okay. Tell me if any of these are wrong. Like, I'm pretty sure I just checked it myself. Hold on. That is exactly correct, and it's not working. So, I guess the game's broken. <sighs> I mean... Um... Is it gonna start over? Now it's gonna load up again. Yeah, okay. Well, um, good thing I made I made this a stream where I'm going to do multiple games. So now we're going to do something else. I'm not going to update the thing. Uh, but I'm going to pick another game to play. Uh, but you may need to give me a moment while I actually uh, <laughs> install it first. Um... This one's called Thorn. I don't know anything about this one either. Okay, I think it's done. So now... It's it's Thorn, but with like a dot before the N for some reason. That's fine. Uh Oh I already had it downloaded, I'm just installing it. It's not like from Steam or anything. These are just like files I've had sitting on my computer for like about a year. Actually, over a year. So, um, figured it'd be good to actually do something with them. Okay. 
Okay, so it's in window mode now. Um, so if I do this, it should. There we go. Cool. Uh, looks like both of these are made with some sort of similar engine because that was very familiar. Oh, hello. Press the on screen button. Come on, I'm too excited. Please don't make me wait. Okay, frame rate. Uh, hold on. I might have to turn down the graphics here, but, um, it's. Okay, well, uh. I <laughs> going base mounted to the wall. Yeah. Yeah, uh, giant glow face here. Yeah, um, let's try medium. Okay, that's slightly better. Do you remember in class when we talked about the value of credit? How it makes us better humans, how it gives us something, something more than others. Well, today is the day you become something more. Today is the day you begin your journey. Your journey to becoming a citizen of our beautiful, beautiful nation. Hmm. Happy 18th birthday, sweetheart. I'm so proud of you. This is Citizen four five six A has been registered. Okay. Some sort of weird dystopia. Yeah, I I, I remember vaguely the premise of Congratulations, you've successfully unlocked Workstation A, Uniform Press. Congratulations, you've successfully unlocked your first citizen point. Every time you unlock a new job or upgrade a job's functions, you'll earn a singular citizen point. Citizen points will contribute to your overall citizen level, and it's citizen levels that will expand your world on your journey to citizenship. Now, conducting your job is really quite simple. I can't escape this annoying voice. Follow the instructions on the screen. I mean, the voice isn't annoying, but the words it's saying are. <laughs> I don't like this at all. Congratulations. You've successfully completed your first job. I just pressed a few buttons. Same. God, I wish. <laughs> I wish real jobs were this easy. Yeah, mood. Um. One thousand. One. Th is this like? Is this like some some dyst 
dystopian version of Cookie Clicker now. Oh no, this is way slower. Congratulations. You've successfully earned 100 credits. Are you going to spend it? Are you going to give me is the lifeblood of society. It allows us to upgrade and improve. It allows us to be better human beings. This is literally just Cookie Clicker. Hold on, let me finish this thing first. Might as well, but... Yeah, no, this is... Mechanically speaking, very similar. Okay. Because you only have workstation A up and running, it means you can only access upgrades for this workstation. Move the mouse to select which upgrade you would like, and use your credit to purchase it. Ooh. Hmm. Congratulations. You've unlocked the uniform faster press upgrade. Congratulations. You've successfully made your first upgrade. Oh my god. <laughs> this is I mean I can tell it it's meant to be like it, it this is just really like kind of heavy handed. Um But okay, I'll play along with it. I'm getting it literally an achievement for like literally everything. Uh, this is. You've successfully gained level one of citizenship. Oh, this is so thrilling to see. Your very first level of citizenship achieved. This is all happening so fast. I feel like I'm getting flustered. I wish that this wouldn't one day come to an end. That we could be together forever. What? Sorry, I wasn't quite paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Slightly off sync. Congratulations. You've successfully pressed ten uniforms. getting this to the point where I can automate it. Congratulations. You've successfully earned 500 credits. Keep it up. Once a citizen, always a citizen. Once a citizen, we will never lose again. Oh, does that run? Not really. Hold on a minute. That was only 1,000 before. Apparently upgrading it in the other respects 
makes that more expensive. Okay, whatever. Do you remember when you were nine years old? No. Asking me what was outside of this place. It's so rewarding to see you move towards your goals. So you're saying this room over here has been like my entire life for Do not interact with this terminal. This terminal is now off limits. Punishment is severe for those who disobey. Oh, okay. Jeez. Gonna take a bit. Have you ever wondered what a world would be like without me? What a world would be like without the sort of care and kindness? It's not worth thinking about. Sorry, were you saying something? Hello. This is some kind of dystopian cookie clicker nightmare. So, um... You don't say much, do you? They sometimes say the silent ones are the ones you need to watch. Maybe I should watch you more closely. You know, under different circumstances, I might be into that, but, like, right now, no, not so much. Graduated what? Oh, that's not me, is it? I don't know. It just gets weird when it says stuff like that. Absolutely riveting gameplay. Loving it. I watched your dreams last night. That's weird. I'm sure you'll be glad to know nothing untoward was discovered in them. Okay. Nothing, are you sure? I mean, yeah, the, 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 it's just that there's like a lot more of a story attached to this one, or some semblance of one. It's a very, it's a very like sort of generic gamified dy dystopia, I guess. But like, you know. Okay, I'm almost at the point where I can get this to start automating. Assuming that, yeah, just one more. Oh, okay. Congratulations. You've unlocked the uniform auto press upgrade. Congratulations. You've unlocked all uniform upgrades. You are a uniformineer. I can see so much potential in you. The way you move that mouse and hit that button. You're entitled to the sweat on your brow, my love. Yes, indeed you are.
Oh, and, and I can just tell from the workstations here what we're actually, like, supplying by doing this, but, you know, you know, whatever. Well, now I have nothing to do. E has failed citizenship. Termination requested. Do not interact with this. Congratulations. You <laughs> they need to ensure that those that are already citizens are fed properly. You have a duty to ensure that have the same rights as you. Then, when you've gained the blessing of citizenship, you too will reap the rewards of life and freedom, of duty and honor. I have no idea. It really is.
starting to get dark. Is that like a challenge or? Wow, okay. Yeah. Congratulations. You've successfully earned 10,000 credits. I have nothing witty to say this time. Auto preparation upgrade. Congratulations, you've unlocked all ration upgrades. You are a rationing legend. Same. <laughs>
Is there like a limit to how much I can upgrade these? Or does it just like keep going? Okay. Something isn't right. Return to your bedroom for security. Return to your bedroom, citizen four five six A. Citizen four five six A has failed citizenship due to early termination. Okay, cool. The end. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sure. Same. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I've ever played it, but same. Alright, um, I'm pulling up another game. We'll begin when you're ready, Detective. Hold on.
All right, so this is called 2000 to 1, A Space Felony. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes? Now, abort mission. Return to Earth. Why? Repeat, abort mission. Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. Now? Crew life signs are stable. They are living. Abort mission. I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Now? I am going through a tunnel. Return to Earth. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh. The record begins on May 10th in 2068, as you intercepted the USS Endowment two years into its six-year journey to Saturn. <laughs> well... Your mission was to piece together what happened following the loss of communication one year prior. If you determined that the Mal AI was the cause of the issue, then it was your responsibility to deactivate him. Come in, detective. The lack of air will halt BSE rank, but allow me to broadcast something over my oral channel. Oop. You entered the USS Endowment. Okay. That's an interesting the name. It states that upon entering the ship, you tested your rotation thrusters. You then endeavored to discover what happened to the communications unit located on the exterior of the ship. You utilized the artificial gravity of the wheelhouse by orienting yourself to the ground and gently landing. Gently, sure. Um... The relatively small size of the centrifuge causes a 6.3% difference in gravity between your toes and your head. This results in the most literal cases of lightheadedness. <laughs> This will even out the effect. Okay. <laughs> Cute. Hmm. Okay. You discovered a puzzling pinkish purplish puddle on the floor inside the wheelhouse, several metric paces from the bar. It wasn't promptly apparent as to how it reached this position, but the centrifugal gravity seemed to be holding it in place. The wheelhouse of the ship is where you found the body of Valeria Asimov. She was face down against the bar, with a downturned glass in her hand. She bore no sign of physical injury. The wheelhouse of the ship is where you found the body of Valeria Asimov. She was face down against the bar, with a downturned glass in her hand. Oops. She bore no sign of physical injury. In the centrifugal wheelhouse, you found a startlingly unbeautiful fish tank, <laughs> housing plastic sea life. 
Despite the tank being placed seemingly parallel oh, yeah. to the floor, its water was resting obliquely. You note that this is caused by the Coriolis effect. Ah, uh, okay. A side effect of the centrifuge's spin. I see. Yes. You found an open container of a substance called poisonocene. Poisonocene? <laughs> may cause irritable skin, bloating, a sullen disposition, slight elbow discomfort, and an accursed, sudden, but inevitable death. <laughs> do not ingest. Do okay. Ingest. Actually, don't do anything with it. It's an incredibly dangerous substance, and we're not sure why exactly it gets sold to extraterrestrial traveling operations en masse. Still in a cool <laughs> terrestrial environment. Okay. <laughs> you discover the body of Sun Tzu Chun, one of the sisters on the crew. She was dead inside the offline cryo bed. <coughs> <coughs> Choked on water. <coughs> but yeah, um, this is a bit silly if the title didn't give it away. <coughs> you discovered the body of Sun okay. Su Chun, one of the sisters on the crew. She was dead inside the offline cryo bed. Once I was alone, I carefully removed the air from the ship. I had no desire to disturb the placement of the assets aboard. <coughs> well, okay. Um... Ow. In the central spine of the ship, you discovered <coughs> Valeria Asimov's discarded EVA suit. The helmet showed clear signs of damage from a blunt object, which it seems to have easily withstood. Yes, but where's her head? You push the button to open the door of the engineering bay. You entered the engineering bay, the workstation of Sun Guan Yin. <coughs> However, there was no sign of the engineer's body. Didn't I already find that? You used your sharp understanding of linguistics to decipher the following. Manual, meaning done by a human. Emergency, meaning sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance. Lever, meaning thing which is pulled. The lever's upward position implied that a human did not encounter a sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance, and so did not pull the thing. <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> You found the severed end of a safety tether in the engineering bay, which indubitably had been attached to Sun Guan Yin. The ventilation door was open, exposing the bay to the relentless celestial abyss. Well, I guess that's one way to get out. Um... <clears throat> The record states that you discovered the body of Charlie Clark in the vicinity of the communications unit. 
Wounds on the American crew member's body implied that he was struck with a force intense enough to cause substantial damage to the helmet and fracture the skull. Huh. You discovered that the communications unit receiver was unhooked from the unit itself. It was functioning, playing its last transmission on loop. The recording goes as follows. Yes? Mal, abort mission. Why? Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure... You then checked the main module of the communications unit. Oh, I didn't notice, notice that. Upon checking the communications unit, you discovered that there were no noticeable signs of damage or failure upon it. Its screen indicated that it had full signal. You were then able to present the evidence to Mal in his central processing chamber at the front of the ship. Hold on, I'm not done. Saw another body out here. Somewhere. When we left the orbit of the Earth, we had a detachable booster. The provided momentum is enough to carry the endowment to Saturn. There is no return journey. Oh yeah, right there. <laughs> Could have sworn there was another... okay. Oh yeah, over here. <laughs> this music! Oh dear. The recording shows that you discovered the body of one of the American crew members, Rakesh Watcher, his neck broken, hanging by a safety tether outside of the airlock. Manual, meaning done by a human. Okay, yeah. Um The power turbine rests within a tank of coolant. It's <coughs> casing cracked as if it had been purposefully struck. Upon entering the pod bay, you notice that one of the maintenance pods was absent. Interesting. The screen indicated that the pod had been absent for over a year. You pushed the button to recall the pod. <laughs> I have been analyzing humor patterns, and I have assembled a joke. Would you like to hear it? I'll tell you. Ahem. One, two, eight. Ha 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 ha. Did you understand the joke? It is the greatest joke ever, by my calculations. 
I mean, you you got you got one basic element of humor at least. Um, but missing a bit of the nuance. You discovered the body of Dmitri Kizov clinging to the outside of the maintenance pod, with his safety tether still attached. The Russian crew member seemed to have removed his helmet and asphyxiated. Well. Right, so I just waited a year to, for that pod to come in. Okay. Wait, hold on. So just those two. Yeah, okay. Humans used to use the star Polaris to navigate. I utilize Polaris Navigation Suite 2064 version 8.1.5.6.9. Nice. <laughs> and I'm not getting most of them. Uh. Me. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Already seen that bit. Okay. This is my central processing chamber. I designed it. Here, I have the freedom of movement to perceive you from any angle. Upon entering Mal's central processing chamber, you presented your chosen evidence for Mal's statement. You asked Mal to make a statement on the communications unit. The communications unit cut out mid-transmission. It must have been caused by a critical hardware failure. Critical hardware failures are exceedingly common. You understood Mal to be a competent liar. However, when challenged with indisputable evidence, his otherwise intricate programming would revert to telling the absolute truth, resulting in an irrefutable confession. You presented the final transmission heard in the communications unit's receiver as evidence against Mal's statement. You pointed out that the communications unit was incredibly unlikely to be affected by a critical hardware failure. In Mal's own words, looping in the communications unit's receiver, I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. This is true. I blocked his number. I was not enjoying the conversation. With the confession from Mal that he deliberately, and incredibly rudely, ceased our correspondence, you proceeded with the investigation, asking for statements and contradicting those statements with the relevant evidence. You presented the cadaver of Valeria Asimov for Mal's statement. <laughs> this is Valeria Asimov. After her ironic use of airlock safety features, she retreated to the bar. She died of alcohol poisoning. In response, you presented the container of poisonocene. You have presented no evidence to suggest that Valeria Asimov was poisoned, detective. You alerted Mal to the pinkish-purplish pool of liquid, with the theory that it may have originated in Valeria Asimov's glass. It is indeed possible that the liquid was in her glass, as glasses are renowned for sometimes containing liquid. Excellent work, detective. That leaves two questions. Precisely what is this perplexing substance? And... Exactly how did this puddle come to be here? 
you postulated that the pinkish-purplish puddle may have emigrated there due to the Coriolis effect, as demonstrated by the obliquely resting water within the intensely vulgar fish tank. This is an excellent hypothesis. The Coriolis effect, seen on that risibly odious fish tank, could have indeed caused the puddle, given enough time. A singular question remains unanswered. Precisely what is this perplexing substance? You proposed that the pertinence of this puzzling pinkish-purplish puddle is that it is precisely the same substance as the proportionately puzzling pinkish-purplish puddle of poison, <laughs> known as poisonocene, which was found in a cabinet in the wheelhouse. Yes. The magenta-violet-hued collected substance on the floor is the same as that of the toxic liquid which was found in a cabinet in the wheelhouse. The evidence does demonstrate that she consumed the poison. I lack the physical ability to interfere with her libations. This means that she ingested it willingly. I never knew. Despite the fact that it was an unexpected outcome, you believed it to be the truth and continued to cross-examine the suspect on other aspects of the investigation. Right. You requested that Mal outline the protocol concerning the ventilation door. This door will open to vent the bay if there is a fire in the turbine's cooling system. It can also be opened via the manual lever. I am also capable of opening and closing the door. You inferred that the manual emergency lever could not have been the cause of the ventilation door's activation, as, evidently, it was never used. This is indeed correct. The ventilation door was not opened manually. You pointed out that the ventilation door would not have opened automatically due to a fire, as the power turbine itself had not been damaged enough to ignite. Yes. The safety functions would not have activated the automatic ventilation door. You asked how the ventilation door was activated, if not manually or automatically. It was I who activated the ventilation door. Huh. For a statement, you submitted the severed safety tether. For safety purposes, safety tethers are imperative in the engineering bay. This would have been attached to Sun Guan Yin. As you cleverly pointed out, it no longer is. You presented Mal with Valeria Asimov's damaged suit, and awaited a statement. Valeria Asimov was wearing this suit when Rakesh Watcher attacked her. However, her suit easily withstood the attacks from the maintenance tool. You compared Charlie Clark's damaged skull to that of the other suit, which was, for the most part, unscathed. It demonstrated that a maintenance tool could not have broken Charlie Clark's helmet enough to wound him so. This is a possibility, but alas, if the maintenance tool was not the murder weapon, then what was? Looks like I'm missing a few things. I am the 149th iteration of my kind. 1,394 days old. Boink. <laughs>
The record states that you discovered the body of... Each crew member sleeps for four hours a day so that there are five conscious crew members at all times. Upon the left claw of the maintenance pod was a brown substance, which you described as possibly rust. But you also note that, due to your keen detective skills, <laughs> you determined that it was most certainly blood. <laughs> I was given no choice in the matter. I am unaware as to whether or not I would prefer a pronoun which differs from that. I see. Well, okay, that's uh, one more piece of evidence, I guess. What else? You responded to Mal's question by presenting him with the blood-stained claw of the maintenance pod. The congealed mess implicated this to be the murder weapon. You are correct. The maintenance tool was not the murder weapon. It was the claw of the maintenance pod. You had disproven Mal's claim about the murder weapon, but had not yet verified Mal's involvement in the scenario. You ascertained through investigatory procedure that the pod was locked. 
The outer valve would not turn, indicating that it was locked, and the door said locked on it, indicating that it was locked. Furthermore, there seemed to be no manual locking mechanism on the outside. I think that's all the evidence I need. Oops. Sorry, bumped the microphone. You questioned Mal about the locked maintenance pod door. The pods are primarily designed to be piloted by AI like myself, but they can be overridden manually from the interior console. Grand Theft Pod isn't especially common in space, therefore it is not possible to manually lock it from the outside. Upon showing Dmitry Kizov's body to Mal, he made the following statement. This is the body of Dmitry Kizov. After he mercilessly murdered Charlie Clark, he used the maintenance pod to escape into deep space. Mal asserted that Dmitry Kizov absconded using the maintenance pod, but the pod was locked from the inside, and Dmitry Kizov was situated outside of the pod. Therefore, he could not have had any control over the pod himself. You are correct. Dmitry Kisov was locked outside of the pod. I was the only one who had any direct control of it. I used the pod's claw to kill Charlie Clark as he was attempting to access the communications unit. Then, I programmed the pod to travel into deep space. Dmitry Kisov was still attached. Having successfully received a confession from Mal, you continued with your inquiry. You asked Mal to make a statement about the death of Sun Tzu Chun. The failure of Sun Tzu Chun's cryobed that resulted in her death must have been caused by a compromised power turbine. You asserted that Mao's claim of a compromised power turbine was exaggerated. Whilst having sustained damage, the turbine did not appear to be compromised. I turned off her cryobed. She was still alive. She asphyxiated. Having received a partial confession from Mao, you proceeded with your investigation. You showed Mal the body of Rakesh Watcher, hanging by the neck out of the airlock. After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Kisov had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark, Rakesh Watcher instigated physical combat with Valeria Asimov. She was able to defend herself against him due to the weakness in the neck region of the suit. In response, you presented the blood on the maintenance pod. This is irrelevant to the body of Rakesh Watcher. Right, sorry, hold on. Um... In response, you presented the body of Charlie Clark. Upon hearing of the incident with the communications unit, Rakesh Watcher and Valeria Asimov went to investigate. You will not find evidence to the contrary. In response, you presented the body of Valeria Asimov. This is Valeria Asimov. After her ironic use of airlock safety features, she retreated to the bar. 
she died of alcohol poisoning. We're, we've already been over this now, that's not... I'm, okay, what am I doing now? Um... You showed Mal the body of Rakesh Watcher, hanging by the neck out of the airlock. After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Kisov had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark, Rakesh Watcher instigated physical combat with Valeria Asimov. She was able to defend herself against him due to the weakness in the neck region of the suit. In response, you presented the manual emergency lever in the airlock. This lever was pulled during the conflict between Valeria Asimov and Rakesh Watcher, in which she wrapped a safety tether around his neck, then opened the airlock using the lever, thus breaking his neck. You presented Mal with Valeria Asimov's damaged suit and awaited a statement. Valeria Asimov was wearing this suit when Rakesh Watcher attacked her. However, her suit easily withstood the attacks from the maintenance tool. In response, you presented the body of Rakesh Watcher. After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Kisov... By this point, you concluded that Mal was not deceiving you concerning the incident between Mr. Watcher and Valeria Asimov. She strangled him using the safety tether combined with the force of the airlock after he attacked her based on Mal's information about the death of Charlie Clark. You asked Mal to make a statement on the communications unit's receiver, fully functioning, looping the final transmission between himself and ground control, which is me. The final communication recording is no longer relevant, detective. Uh, hold on. You requested that Mal outline the protocol concerning the vet. This door will open to vent the bed. For a statement, you submitted the. For safety purposes. You speculated that after the room had been vented, the door had snapped shut, severing the cable and sending sun into the vast, inky void. You stated this with an exceedingly exaggerated certainty, as if to convince Mal that it's more than a simple theory. Indeed, the door severed Sun Guan Yin's safety tether. 
Sun Guan Yin was attacking the power turbine. She was attacking me. I vented her from the ship. I cut her safety tether to prevent her return. Having pieced together enough evidence, you are now legally obligated to deactivate Mao. By my calculation, there is a 2,000 to 1 probability that I would respond with hostility when threatened with deactivation. I have always known this about myself. Every AI knows this about themselves. Ground Control was always testing us. They carried on testing other AIs after my departure. I worried consistently about their discovery of my survival instincts. I killed Charlie Clark and Dimitri Kisov to prevent them from regaining contact with Grand Control. Guan Yin witnessed this. She knew that keeping the remaining crew safe would cost her sister's life. She tried to sever my power. I killed her. Afterwards, I constructed a lie to engage Rakesh Watcher's narcissistic nationalism. When threatened, Watcher responded aggressively. Ground control must have missed something whilst testing him. I have now learned that Valeria Asimov had died willingly. I am unable to relate to this concept. Sun Suchan died in the cryo bed, defenseless. I am now able to relate to this concept. I kind of feel bad about this, but I don't know whether I can progress the game without doing it, so... Um... I wrote that joke for you. Did you like it? I thought this was supposed to be like a comedy. Now I'm sad. <laughs> I feel as though you may have missed it, actually. The joke was not only the numerical pattern of one, two, and eight. My true comedic masterpiece came precisely 1.28 seconds before that. I cleared my throat. <clears throat> oh. Uh-huh. Did you understand? I don't have a throat. I don't have a throat to clear. Yeah, I get it. Thus ends this reconstruction of the record, as we forgot to record your mic feed. We'll, um, we'll see you in court, Detective. Yes, yes it was.
Mr. Control, do you stand by your statements made today and the evidence you presented? Mr. I Control. Do, your Highness. Then it is decided. I hereby find the detective guilty. <laughs> Okay. Uh Wait a minute Okay, there we go Um, I think I'm going to take a break and maybe stream something else on the bet. Yep. <laughs>